What's up guys, this is John from Cars and Cameras and today I am putting a 19 horsepower, 190 cc, five speed engine on a 1971 Honda Trail 70. I bought this 71 Trail 70 about six months ago for 200 bucks, which is a steal for a rolling chassis. It looks like someone started a restoration and they just lost interest and didn't finish it. But the paint is in excellent condition. I love the red and it's the perfect platform for me to do an all out killer 190 build on. I'm going all out for this build. I've been accumulating parts over the last few months. I have a plus two inch extended swing arm, the 190 cc engine. Uh, I'm looking at 12 inch wheels, a new fork setup, and a front disc brake. This thing is going to get upgraded to the max because I wanna be able to actually road trip this thing. I absolutely love my 74 Trail 70 with a 140 cc engine on it. Uh, the thing is just great for around town. It'll do 68 miles an hour too with a 140, but it gets a little squirrely on the highways. It's really happy at about 45 miles an hour. So if I can make this thing cruise comfortably at 60 or even 65, that would be awesome. That's my goal for this build. If you're excited about this project, go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Cars and Cameras for future updates and to help our channel grow. Without any further ado, let's dig into this build. I actually think I dig the uh, rake look there. I think I like the stance look. As you can see, the new one is aluminum, beefier construction, and it has more range for your chain tension, and it also extends uh, the wheel mount two inches. Honestly, it doesn't look like two inches if I'm 100% honest right now. So I have the pivot points lined up perfectly over there, and it looks like this swing arm is actually one inch difference and not two inches. Throughout the planning of this build, I've been talking to my buddy Jason, who owns the CT70 Modders Group on Facebook. Highly recommend you join it if you have one of these bikes. It's super helpful, super awesome. I'd be willing to bet that whoever painted this probably didn't prep the surface properly, where they didn't use self-etching primer. They skipped some kind of step because this paint is like flaking off when I breathe on it. Wow. All right, so it is going to be slammed in the back. I'm finished up with the rear section of this Trail 70 build until I get tires in and then I can mount the wheels and the hubs and the brakes and all that stuff, but I'm stuck on the rear until I get those tubes and tires in. I had to redo some of the shims uh, to fit the inner diameter of the bearing, so I'm gonna move on to the front. So now I'm taking the original forks, wheels, handlebars off and setting up my new triple tree setup. Need to get a screwdriver and hammer so I can loosen that nut, take it off, and the forks should drop. And you know what I noticed that was really funny? Someone's fingerprint is actually in this paint somewhere. Oh, there she blows. So the triple trees are in and I have that threaded collar on and I used a, a screwdriver or a punch and a hammer to get it nice and tight, but running into a little bit of a problem. So I slide this on and I only have like a thread for this to go on. And the cause is that there's a race in here that needs to get knocked in. I can feel the ridge of where it needs to settle, but I can, I wail on it and I hit it uh, you know, I hit it and it just doesn't budge anymore. So I'm gonna carefully try to knock it out and clean up the inside of this frame because there could be built up paint or other garbage that's keeping it from moving up. I might damage it uh, on the way out. 
The other point, the other issue, which really sucks, is that this paint is just falling to pieces. So, like I said, I'm gonna roll with it for a season or two and then repaint it. That's it, folks. So because I don't have tires, I'm not gonna mount the front wheel, the front brake assembly, the hub, uh, or the caliper. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount the engine because I do have that. I don't have a wiring harness, but I have the coil, the CDI, um, so I can get started. So this engine is only 190 cc's, but it's a little powerhouse and it's not light. Five speed transmission, 19 horsepower. And remember my 140 with about 14 or 15 horsepower can do like 68 miles an hour on one of these things. So I should be north of 80 if I wanted to. Not really planning on it. But it'll be good for the highway. Lots of passing power. I think the frame is lighter than the engine. Uh, I got some more parts in, like this seat. This thing is beautiful. It is faux quilted leather, banana seat. I think it's gonna look really, really good up against the red. I'm having a little bit of a hard time fitting the 190 in this frame. You either, usually you either have to trim the engine mounts or the frame. I'm choosing to trim the engine mounts just because it's just, it's not fitting in. I'm, I'm prying the chassis a little bit and it's just not there. So I'm just having to trim the aluminum on the case of the engine. It's nice and thick there. I'm not damaging or ruining the structural integrity of the engine. It's just for clearancing purposes only. Got it. So it's been a few days since uh, you've seen me work on this project and yeah, I got some stuff done while the camera was off. So I apologize for that. Uh, I got the headlight bucket in, the handlebars are on. I had to trim around this bolt holding the forks on. Got the wheels on, but they need to come back off so I can install the speedo cable. Have the brake caliper, have the carburetor intake on. Uh, making some real moves over here. The wiring is gonna take a little bit of time, but so far the harness is plug and play. So I'm gonna keep on chugging. So I'm in the middle of wiring here, and there are kind of some photos online that are the instructions. They don't seem to 100% match up with like, with my situation. I mean, you can't make one set of instructions for a wiring harness like this and expect every single one to be the same. Uh, but it seems like everything is just like lining up. So I'm just plugging and chugging. Like, I mean, for example, like this male has uh, nine wires going into it and the female has the same nine wires going into it. So like, I'm just plugging it in and we're gonna see what happens. Um, so in a minute, I'm gonna put the battery in. We can test the headlight among other things. And I'm gonna get the fire extinguisher because you never know. So I got most of the harness plugged in and installed. Oh, dude. Wait, what the duke? Where does that red one go then? Doesn't it go to the starter? Probably, because there's this one. I was wondering where it went. Ike's holding everything together for me, but we should be ready for a test. I should have everything except for turn signals and brake lights. So I should have horn. We should see ignition uh, and the digital readout thing come on. The light. You ready? Headlight. And look at that, oh wow, it says we're going, oh, it's doing some kind of startup thing. Okay, zero miles an hour. High beam? Yeah, we got a high beam and the switch comes on there too. We should have more. Ready? Oh, that's awesome. I don't have any of the wiring to the charging system up either, because it looks like that one is not gonna plug in. I'm gonna have to Frankenstein something together, but this is awesome. Speedometer, high beam, low beam, um, horn. Turn signals come on on the dash, but I don't have them wired up yet. That's awesome. Victory. The new upgrade kit I got came with this auxiliary fuel tank because this 190 is going to drink. Um, even with this and the regular fuel tank, I'm probably looking at 50, 60 miles. Anyway, so this is going to be my primary fuel tank until I get the new one in. I'm not like super excited about how it looks. Purely a functional modification. So if I'm 100% honest, I don't know if the brake rotor goes on the right side or the left side, but I'm just gonna give it a shot. It's on the right side and I'm gonna have to... So I'm about to test the throttle cable. Idle, that looks like wide open. 
So we have throttle. Winner. I just need to route it a little better. We are hoping to get this project running and wrapped up today. Uh, I got a fuel tank in, figured out that my wiring harness is actually for a non-electric start engine. So I'm gonna either have to kickstart it or rig up some kind of starter button. Uh, gotta install the exhaust, gotta install the front brake. Other than that, it's pretty much ready to go. Battery's hooked up, all the wiring is good, hit it, man. We got lights, we got our startup sequence, and hit it. Sparking, we're good. Got all the guts stuffed in the headlight bucket, that's tightened up. I'm gonna go ahead and lift the front of the frame just because it's a little too slammed right now. And if we lift the front, uh, it'll probably actually sit on its uh, kickstand. And tri-stand. And tri-stand, so let's try it. Here's some useful consumer information. Your forks and front rotor are gonna show up kinda in any different way. So right out of the box, I, I put the uh, forks on and the rotor just like they came, and the rotor was flipped upside down and the forks were on the wrong way too. So if you're ordering the same kit, just know that your rotor should be on the driver's side. The bracket mount, the rotor should be on the bracket side and the, uh, did I say the rotor? The caliper mount. The rotor needs to be turned out kind of like that. So it's not flush with the wheel, but it's actually poking out from the wheel. Anyway, so we've just been dealing with that. So you guys are gonna be pretty disappointed with me. My show bike is gonna get cut on just a little bit. So, this entire kit I bought didn't come with any directions. We have tried every single possible configuration of the front end parts. We have tried switching the fork tubes around, we have sw tried switching the hub around, switching the rotor direction, and we cannot get the wheel centered at the same time as the rotor not hitting the lower part of the fork tube. Just check it out. So if you look here, the front wheel is centered between the forks. When you get to the rotor on this side, and like I said, we tried it on the other side, flipping it around. Um, when you try to bolt it up, it actually hits the lower part of that fork tube right there. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to trim just a little bit of that piece of the fork tube. I'm not proud of it, but there's no manufacturer support for this kit. So like, that's the only thing we can see that's gonna get us running at this point. I don't know about Ike, but I'm just at a point where I'm ready to get this thing on the road. I'm tired of messing with this janky front end. So we're just gonna make it even jankier and we're just gonna do a little bit of trimming, right? Yeah. A little bit? Just a little bit. I'm ready to get this thing riding, guys. Might be it, dude. So yeah, I'm really not thrilled about hacking this thing up, even though it's just a little bit, because I really want it to be just like the perfect show bike, but whatever. The paint wasn't perfect anyway. I can touch it up with some black paint, and no one will ever know except everybody ever watching this video. <laughs> we got some highs and lows right now. <laughs> the lows are that this clutch cable that I bought does not seem to be working. I'm gonna have to modify something. It's not the end of the world, but it's just like one less bolt together thing. A high is that the exhaust is going in right now. So, actually didn't know it when I first ordered it. I thought it was like a regular style exhaust, but this exhaust goes through the bottom and shoots up like that with a muffler. It looks cool, but I'm afraid like the first time I go over a speed bump, it's gonna get crushed. Off camera, I modified the clutch bracket just because we didn't have enough throw in this cable, so I had to move the mounting point and the clutch feels good. We have the brakes all hooked up on the front. Now we just need to work on the rear brakes and the exhaust and a million little things. Let me get some distance here, man. Distance? Well, you know, she's just gonna be so powerful. Ready? Yep. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm can't. just so ready to get this thing running. I can't wait. Yeah. So, a million little things. Let's do it. Yep. You ready? 
Yeah. No chain, no nuts in the axles. We're just hearing this thing fire. Tell by the grin on your face, dude. Other than the clutch maybe not working. Maybe there's not enough throw. I don't know. Yeah. Something something we need to look into. Right. All right, dude, you know what it's time for? What's that? Chain time. We got this pre-stretched chain from Go Power Sports. Thank you, Go Power Sports. Racing chain. Racing chain, and we have not had a failure yet. Yeah, we put that stuff on our 420 mini bike uh, at Go Power Sports, and then we rode like 100 miles in Colorado on dirt roads. Zero problems with the chain. Yeah. So check out this racing chain at a link in the description of this video. Again, gopowersports.com. And when you place your order, let them know that we sent you and enter their monthly in-store credit giveaway. So the rear fender's looking all janky because the dude who sold me this kit sent me the wrong rear shocks. They should be longer. So I'm just waiting on those. Also, I don't know about you guys, but like, we have specific things that just go missing. Like, we have probably bought three or four chain brakes in our day, all gone. So we're back to using the bench grinder. Come on. Uh, on installing these links, you really want this rounded in going in the direction of the rotation of the chain, not the open end. So the round end forward on the top of the chain. So one thing you noticed about that muffler, man, that's like a mirror, isn't it? Yeah. There's a baffle in the other side that not, we can actually not remove. For long. Yeah, not for long. <laughs> so we're gonna run it like that. It's probably gonna be nice and quiet. And we're gonna remove the baffle and, uh, you know, grab the pipe spreader. And uh, we're able to get the muffler on the rest of the exhaust. Because when this came, this muffler did not fit on the header. This is your bi weekly cars and cameras safety glasses moment. Wow, that's a uh... tight spring. Yes, it is. Oh goodness. Oh my goodness. Do you want beefier pliers? Uh, ooh. One will do right now, right? One will do. You're just, absolutely just right. Just for time being. Yeah. So I don't know if this is the official break-in procedure for this engine, but what I've heard is you start it up, let it warm up, turn it off, let it cool down, and repeat that process four times. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We've already done it once, and we'll get back to you when we go for a ride. Alright, dude. Just do me a favor. Yeah. And don't try to test out them 19 ponies. You got it. I, I kind of like it. Me too. Oh, it sounds like a beetle. It's got that beetle whistling weird sound out of the tailpipe. It's responsive, dude. Yeah. Ready? Uh, are you ready? He's riding it.
it's too long legged for this yard. Uh -huh. But uh, it's pretty it's pretty solid. Yeah, I heard you scraped the fender. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wanna give it a go? Sure. Be careful. So after what felt like a very long time, we finally got to ride this thing around. It was my impression that this would just kind of be a bolt together, wham, bam, thank you, man, fit, build. Not even close. Um, none of this stuff came with instructions. Um, a lot of stuff, well not a lot of stuff, but a few things required trimming, shimming, a little bit of here, a little bit of there. So if you are like an absolute beginner, I would not recommend trying to build like this, unless you got a lot of time on your hands. But yeah, we have a few things here and there to uh, to just tidy up and fix. Of course, the main thing is that I need to go to the title office and apply for a, a title on this thing so I can ride it around on the street. But so far, very, very responsive. Uh, much more responsive than my 140, which is no slouch of an engine. I mean, what do, you, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Should we go on a road trip with this? What kind of road test do you want to see in a video with the CT70? 190 edition. Of course, I need to get the tail light functioning. I need to put the main fuel tank in it. Lots of little here and there things. But yeah, I mean, it's like, I don't want to call it a show bike because technically it is just kind of parts that I bought online all kind of put together. It's not custom. How about that? Yes. But it is clean. <laughs> it's not bad other than like the paint, which is just so tragic. But it's holding up pretty good for now. And I'm just going to enjoy it. Ride it like this. Put a ton of miles on it. Until then, thank you for watching this video, guys. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews to see what we're up to in between videos. Pick up a t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. And of course, Mini Mayhem is coming up soon, October 4, 5, 6. You won't see the CT190 there, but you will see our more off-road oriented projects. This is one of our only on-road oriented projects. Most of them are off-road. Anyway, is there anything you wanted to say, buddy? Yeah, of course. Check me out at Isaac. It'll be fine. Ike's got a 190 build plan, too. Yes, I do. Yes, just, I a, do. just a matter of getting started. Yeah, and mine's going to be more uh, built, not bought. More built? What do you mean? More built. Like, no, factory front forks, factory swing arm, lengthened stuff. Cheap man. What's up everybody? We're hitting up Busco Beach a few weeks before Mini Mayhem just to get a lay of the land, see how the trails are doing, and test some of our projects out. So here is how you get to our meeting point, or the meeting point we want to have when you're arriving at Busco Beach. So there's only one road into the park. Go ahead and show them, dude. So to the right we have trails, on the left we have woods. Here's a sign that says Busco Beach entrance must check in at office or you are trespassing. So we come around this corner. Water is pretty low, dude. Good. Hasn't rained in a while. Ooh, that's I like that. Yeah, it looks Let's fun. see if we can pull with that. <laughs> yeah. With the uh, Actually, yeah, that's gonna yeah. be great. Alright, so the road is ending, turning into a dirt path. We're gonna drive up here and pull off on the right and park and walk into uh, that building there to check in, pay, and sign their liability waiver. All right, so we're gonna head in there, get checked in, do everything we need to do, and we'll show you where we're gonna meet from there. So we're all paid up and we are coming in the main gates and our meeting location is going to be to the left. So you can go right or left. We are going to the left on the sand. And this is where we're planning on meeting, considering over 100 people have RSVP'd and also other people here for the weekend. We could be more spread out than we want to be. But uh, we come around to the bend here on the left and there's a five mile an hour speed limit coming through here. That's for your cars and your uh, go-karts, mini bikes, ATVs, dirt bikes, whatever. The water is nice and low, dude. So in in April, 
Yeah, in April, dude, this last year, it was, uh, it was muddy, but since it's been so dry, I think it has potential to be just a lot more friendly for, like, the stiff chassis stuff with, like, turf tires, you know? Yeah, so, so right up here, yeah, I think this area right here is where we're gonna want to be at. Yep, so right here on the right is uh, where we parked last time. And I think that's where we're gonna park this coming time. I think for today we may more try to park in those woods. Yeah, shade, man. But uh, right here is where we're planning on being. So these woods are great for camping. There's plenty of shade and tree coverage. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's like a little community pops up for the weekend, just about go-karts and mini bikes. It is really, really cool. So we are looking forward to seeing you guys there. We picked up some maps. We'll get some good B-roll of these for you in this video. And then also uh, you can pick up these maps and their, uh, their fees at the front office when you check in as well. Anyway, we are looking forward to seeing you guys out at Mini Mayhem Fall 2019. Hopefully we should be looking at some beautiful weather. Knock on wood. Uh, yeah, it seems like it seems like the park's in good shape right now. So, looking forward to seeing you there. Yeah, and and we'll see you there. So if the check-in office is there, we're planning on meeting right around here. So again, you take this road that curves around to the left, five mile an hour speed limit. We should be right about there.